Uh, with it. All right. Um, back to Acts 13 and 6. Um, this particular they, because the Bible says, and when they had gone through the isles of, of Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. But this particular day uh, that Luke uh, was talking about, and I say Luke because Luke wrote the book of Acts. <laughs> yeah, he wrote the book of Acts, right? And he was previously a medical doctor. Y'all all right? Amen. But he found Jesus. I'm working on something right now. I'm trying to see it the right way. But he found Jesus, right? And so all things being equal, amen, you want to pray and believe God that if you have to go, you want to go to somebody that have found Jesus. Right. Right. Can I say it like that? Amen. Right. Because some other stuff came up in my, in my spirit, but I ain't going to say that. But we want, we want to make sure that we believe in God, that, Lord, let, let it be somebody that knows you. You know, I was talking to somebody uh, the other day, and I was telling them basically that they were behind the veil. And, and the Lord was talking to me through somebody else, was telling me that if he not, did not have people positioned in all of those industries of life, you know, the devil would flood those zones. If he didn't have a saint over here and a saint over there and a saint over, over there, because my... My perspective was kill them all. Y'all got it? But the Lord had to show me, no, I got some people over here. I got some people over there. I got some people down there. And if they was not in there, the enemy would flood those zones. The enemy would go in there and do whatever he is he wanted to do to any and everybody, right? But because God got forward watching, you know, what people are doing, they have more, have more of a tendency to do what's right. In general, are y'all with me? Amen. But this particular day uh, that Luke was talking about was referring to Barnabas and Saul, right? Uh, who was also called Paul, uh, and later on they added John Mark to their ministry. Amen. And and you got to read the Bible to know these things. Y'all got it. But it was talking about Paul and Barnabas who added John Mark to the, their ministry. You can read about Barnabas and Saul's. A commission from the church of Antioch, you need to be commissioned, uh, in verses 1 through 4 of Acts 13. And they added John Mark uh, to their ministry in verse 5 of the 13th chapter. Are y'all still with me? Now in verse 6, after they had gone through the isles of Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer. And, uh, and I found this interesting because the scripture said that they found a certain sorcerer, Right? Uh, which meant that this particular sorcerer was not just any old sorcerer. You got sorcerers and you got certain sorcerers. Y'all y'all with y'all with that? Which meant that this particular sorcerer was a man, somebody who was efficient in using demonic powers. Everybody's not proficient. Everybody's not efficient in doing what they're doing, right? How many of you want to be efficient? Say, I want, to be efficient. I want to be efficient. And I want you to be efficient, amen, in doing what you are doing, right? So, but this particular saucer, he rose up through the ranks. Uh, uh, the truth is some people have been actually promoted by the devil. Because I'm just talking about the way certain mysteries work, right? Some people in life are actually promoted by the devil. You follow me? They don't know that they are, but they have been promoted. Uh, by the devil. Y'all got it? The Bible says so we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, amen, in high places. So you have certain people in high places of society. The reason they got there was because they got there because they were promoted by the enemy. You know, I mean, you take, for instance, in our political arena, amen, I believe there are a lot of people who are demonically inspired, amen, in those positions. Y'all follow me? I'm not talking about everybody, but a lot of folks been actually promoted to those positions by the devil. That's why how they got voted in. Yep. Y'all, because other people were inspired by the devil who voted for them and then put them in. And don't nobody know the mysteries behind all of that stuff. Because we wake up sometimes and say, how in the world did that person, because they do things so contrary to what was written, how in the world did that person get in that position? 
And it was simply because, and I'm just talking in general, you do what you want to do, but I'm talking in general, you know, it was simply because those individuals were promoted by the devil. And you don't want to be a part of that. Glory to God. That's why you got to pray. See, I got to pray. All right. Now, the Bible says in verse 7 of Acts 13 that this sorcerer was uh, with the deputy. Amen. You remember that? Uh, or we could say that this particular sorcerer gave counsel to the deputy, to the deputy from the spirit that controlled him. Can y'all see that? That's a mystery, right? This particular sorcerer gave counsel to the deputy from the spirit that controlled him. So there are people in authority that, that are getting counsel from people that are getting counsel from the devil. Y'all with me? So the devil controls the person in authority through that counsel. That's why I pray all the time. I bind up every counsel that's not of you, Lord. I bind up every counsel, amen, for this church that's not of you. I bind up every counsel that, that will try to minister to you that's not of God. Y'all follow me? I bind up every counsel that will try to minister in this state that's not of God. And those that are ordained of God to give counsel to those that are in authority. I bind up every counsel that's not of God where this city is concerned. Y'all follow me? Because there are counsels going on. You, why are you at home sleep? You know, my mama used to say, bless her soul. Why are you sleep, boy? Somebody's up trying to figure out how to get your money. Y'all, y'all, and that is the truth, you know, but we want to just go through him willy-nilly and think ain't nothing like that going on. The truth is it really, really is. And I'm not trying to make you paranoid, but I'm telling you, you need to be careful. That's why you need to pray. You follow me? So you don't get taken advantage of, right? So this particular sorcerer gave counsel uh, to the deputy, amen, and the deputy had, uh, or because the deputy had authority in that country, amen, uh, he was over the geographical area of that particular geographical area, right? That's why the Bible commands us to pray for those in authority. Y'all hear me? And so we have to pray for those, amen, who are in authority, right? I pray for all of those who are in authority, uh, in the body of Christ. Now, I pray for the body of Christ uh, uh, holy. You follow me? All of the body of Christ, but I especially pray for those who are in authority in the body of Christ. I pray for every uh, apostle and prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every shepherd, every sheep, and every lamb. Y'all follow me? Because we're commanded to do that, right? If we don't do that, well, we get what we get. You follow me? No longer can you say it's just me and my folk. It ain't like that, right? So we pray for all of those who are in authority, and we pray for the body of Christ. I pray for everybody uh, who has been praying for me and are continuing to pray for me. Nobody say, I better pray for him then. Yeah, but I pray for everybody who's been praying for me and, th and those who continue to pray for me, all right? Yeah. Y'all got it? Amen. I pray that all of their needs will be met according to God's riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I pray that the peace of God will rule their hearts and their minds. Y'all got it. I pray that the will of God will prevail in their life. I pray for everybody that's praying for this ministry. How many of you know everybody ain't praying for this ministry? Y'all got it? And, but I pray for, for all of those who are praying for this ministry. And God got people praying for this ministry. How you know that? Because I'm praying for their ministry. See, I'm reaping what I'm sowing. That's a mystery. That's how it goes, right? So if you don't pray for them, you know, they ain't praying for us. Y'all with that? So they got to pray for us because I'm praying for them. Somebody said they got to pray for me because I done learned the mystery. All I got to do is pray for them. Y'all with it? So Bar Jesus, the sorcerer, was under the control of a demonic spirit uh, that ministered to the deputy through him. And he had what uh, is called a renegade or an antichrist spirit that opposed the things of God. And we all have heard about that particular terminology, uh, a renegade spirit or an antichrist spirit. And, and, and that's those who are opposed uh, to the things of God, right? That's why you got to know the things of God. 
You follow me so you can figure out who's opposed to it and who's for it, right? How many believe you need to know that? Yeah. I need to know who's for God. And I need to know who's against God. And God will reveal that to me. He'll reveal that to you so we won't be in the dark about it. Y'all got it? Now, sadly, people who oppose the things of God are being ministered to by a renegade spirit, uh, just like the Prince of Persia was in the book of Daniel, right? They are being ministered to by a renegade spirit. And, and I'm talking in general. I ain't putting nobody down. I'm just trying to make sure that your eyes are open and you understand the mysteries that's behind these things, right? Go to Daniel's 10 and 10. Are y'all getting anything? Thank you, Lord. Daniel's 10 and 10. Are you there? Almost. Thank you, Lord. All right. Y'all ready? It says, and behold, the hand, uh, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken uh, this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, O Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come uh, for thy words, right? Verse 13 says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me, me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came uh, to help me, and I remained there uh, with the king of Persia, right? This particular angel was ministering uh, to Daniel and letting Daniel know what was actually going on behind uh, the scene, right? Y'all with me? And he said, but lo, Michael, one of the chief prince, amen, came uh, to help me. So angels increase in power whenever it is necessary. Y'all follow me? Can y'all see that? In other words, this particular angel stayed, though, uh, there uh, with, with Michael for a season because the Bible said he stayed. Amen. Lord Michael, one of the chief priests, came to help me, and I remained there uh, uh, with the king of Persia. So this angel stayed for a season to help Michael to do warfare against the spirit that was ministering to the prince. Can y'all see that? The prince was a natural uh, man that had a spiritual backing. That was not of God. Y'all follow me? So both uh, the angel and Michael done warfare against that particular demonic foe, right? And that angel, amen, broke through because Michael had it under control. You follow me? Verse 14 says, Now am I come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. Amen. And so one of the things I got out of that as a mystery was the fact that God actually wants us to understand. He don't want us to be in blindness. He don't want us to be uh, in darkness, right? We're supposed to be a people that have an understanding. And, you know, and I say sometimes about all things, because when you read the book of Acts in the first beginning of the book of Acts, uh, I, it might be Acts or Luke, but Luke act, actually said, he said, therefore having perfect understanding of all things. I think it was in the book of Acts, right? And what that tells me is that it's possible for you to have understanding about everything. You got it. And some people don't think that's possible, but it is possible for you as an individual, especially the things that concern you. You follow me? I ain't talking about, you know, necessarily you understand everything that pertains to trigonometry because you ain't going to pursue it. <laughs> right? But what I am saying if you decide to, protrude, to uh, pursue trigonometry, God will give you perfect understanding about it. Y'all yep. got it? So we got to be believing that, that that can happen for us, right? God don't want us to be in darkness. And, and I believe once you get through with it, uh, from God's perspective, it'll turn around and lead back to God, lead back to Jesus some kind of way. Y'all follow me? And so what the enemy does, he get in those particular vineyards, venues, amen, and he eventually try to turn people's hearts away from God with what they understand, right? But true understanding will lead you back to God. Yes, sir. 
Are y'all with me? Anything that leads you away from God, that's not understanding that it has come from God. Y'all with me? All right. Now, the angel said to Daniel, though, in verse 11 of chapter 13. Y'all see it? What does verse 11 say? And he said unto me, read, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto you, right? So in verse 11, amen, the angel said to Daniel that he was greatly beloved of God. Y'all remember that? He was greatly beloved of God. And in 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse 8, uh, it declares that God is love, right? That's his character, right? So if we're going to be like God, we got to have the character of love. Y'all with me on that, yeah? We got, we got to have the character of love, right? But here the scripture indicates that Daniel was a man who was greatly beloved by God. Y'all remember that? He was greatly beloved by God, meaning that he had a love for him that was beyond the average. Are y'all still with me? God had a love for Daniel that was beyond the average, right? Because he was greatly beloved of God, right? And if you study the text, you'll find out that uh, he had that because of the type of man that Daniel was. Are, are y'all with me? God loves everybody, but he had a great love for Daniel, right? And, and he loved Daniel that way because of the type of man. Somebody said the type of man. Amen, that Daniel was. Now, if you really study this stuff, man, when I, when I start looking at the book of Daniel, you know, Daniel was a bad boy, and I say that in a good context. Daniel was sold out, oh, Lord, to God. Did y'all hear me? He wasn't, he wasn't just a, and when I say man, I, I'm talking about mankind, but he was not just an average man. You follow me? He was sold out to God. God knew he could depend on Daniel. We're all growing, but does God know that he can depend on you? Y'all follow me? And I'll say that we all can get there. You follow me? We can grow to the point that where in all things, most things, some things, God can depend on us even while we are growing. God, I got this over here. The way I'm supposed to act is what I mean. You follow me? And God knows over here I can depend on David. You follow me? And God knows about you. Over there I can depend on, on him or her. Y'all follow me? And, and that's what we actually want, right? Y'all got it? So, so Daniel was greatly beloved by God, amen, which was more than just an average love. And I tell you that love is God's character, right? And Daniel was one who was greatly beloved, right? Now, God's love for us, uh, and there's no comparison to that love, amen, that God has for us. But I believe all things being equal, amen, we should live in a way that it will cause God to express his love for us in a greater way. Right? How many of y'all believe God loves you? Yeah. And he does, right? No comparison to that, right? But I do believe that according to this scripture, we can live in a way where God will cause the angels that are encamped around about us to say, man, oh man, or woman of God, greatly are thou beloved by God. How many of y'all believe that? Yeah. I believe what God has for you can go to the next level or to a greater level. And I think we all ought to want that, right? God loves me, but I want his love for me to go to a greater level or to the next level, right? Because what happens when that happens is it'll cause God to do things for us that he is not doing for other people. 
Y'all follow me? And, and then you won't have to get mad. When, he's, when you see him doing some things for other people that he has not done for you yet. Y'all got that he has not done for you yet. Yeah, right. Y'all got that? Amen. And so, uh, you know, you ought to want to know what God, what made you do that for that person. I ain't going to compete with that person. I ain't going to talk about that person. I, I ain't going to dig for that person. I ain't going to see what I can find on that person. But what made you do that for that person? And I personally be God to tell you. You follow me? And not to condemn us or to, or to kill us, but so you can get it right so he don't have no hindrance in his way. Oh, God. Because there are certain things I personally believe, you know, and I'm talking to grown-up people, people in the things of God. I ain't talking about no babies. or Y'all got it? But I believe there's certain things in our lives that we need to get straight for God. Y'all follow me? Let me tell me about no grace. You better get that mess out your heart. You follow me? Because God, you know, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And God is saying, I'm looking at all this stuff, man. That's something I want to do, but you need to get that out the way. Are y'all with me? Amen. And, and, and God will let us know what that is, amen, and then he'll turn around and help us to get it out of the way so it don't hinder him from doing what he want to do uh, in our lives, right? St. John 15 and 12, y'all should get anything. Man, I thought I would have been farther along by now, but praise God. St. John 15 and 12 through 14 says, this commandment uh, uh, that ye love one another as I have loved you. This is what Jesus was saying, right? Love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, than a man lay down his life, amen, for a friend. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you to do. Now, you know, we all working on that, right? Yeah. What That greater love. You know, I ain't going to ask nobody to raise their hand, you know. But how many folks you know would die for you? Y'all off quiet. Jesus said, that's a great love. We all grown, ain't telling nobody you finna die. <laughs> right, right? But Jesus said, that's a great love. That a person can get to that point. Abraham got to that point. He was willing to kill his son. For God. His, willing was, his son was willing too. Y'all with that? And so, you know, their, their commitment was there. I'm not telling you that's what God is requiring of you. I'm just telling you their commitment was there. And sometimes when we read the Bible, we forget about the level of commitment uh, that these people had. You know, when we read about Jesus, when we read about Paul, we read about Peter, you know, Mark and, and John and, and, and Luke and Dan, man, all of the Old Testament patriarchs, man, man, we forget that these people had a level of commitment that's beyond our comprehension right now. And we are, I want to be like Paul. I want to be like, okay, hey, 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 hey. Paul wasn't no joke. About the things of God is what I'm telling you, right? And, and, and trust me, not that it's a wisdom for all of this, you know, based on where you are in the area that you're, you're in. And I'm not saying to you don't operate in a wisdom. It's a wisdom for that if you reach out for it. But I'm just trying to, it's a commitment. See, commitment is two things. It's numerical and it's devotional. Uh, Y'all hear me? It's numerical mean number one, and it's devotional mean that you fully committed to it. Um, you devoted to it. Y'all follow me? Now, there are certain things that I don't want to get into today, but there are certain things that should come first. 
right? But if for uh, whatever reason it doesn't come first, you still devote it. <laughs> Y'all got it. When the time presents itself for you to choose, you're going to still choose God. Right? So it's numerical, number one. Right? God is first, right? And it's devotional, right? I'm committed to the things of God. Y'all with me? Case in point, if you get up in the morning and you don't put God first, and you should put God first, right? But throughout the day, you have an opportunity to make a decision. Then you, you, you are devoted to God in that decision that you make. You follow me? In this, I can't do that. You know, Joseph said, listen, woman, how can I do that against my, my king, you know, up against my God, against, against the king, you know, and everybody, you want me to lie with you? How can I do that, you know, and offend God and the king and, and everybody that's, you follow me? So he was devoted to God. Are y'all still with me? Amen. So we want God to have a great love for us. Do you? Amen. Now, we're commanded to love one another. But there are some people that you will have a special love for. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? You know, you love everybody, but some folks you have a special love for. And God will drop that in your heart, right? That's why the Bible says that uh, we're supposed to do special things for those who are of, of the household of faith, right? That's different from, from other people. You, you see that? Are y'all still with me? Uh, now, here uh, God is talking through Moses. That's in Deuteronomy uh, 7 and 6. It declares, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face, amen, uh, of the earth, right? So God got special people talking about Israel, uh, talking about the Jewish nation, and, and I always say all the time, keep your mouth off of the Jews. Y'all follow them because we're in the day of the Gentiles. And when the last Gentile come in, which is a non-Jew, God is going to fully turn back to uh, the Jews. And them that are not saved, eyes will come open and they'll see Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, right? So don't bother them. Y'all follow them because when they got chastised, then God turned around and chastised the one that he used to chastise them. So that's why I said that's a no-win scenario. If you're not saved. Y'all follow me? So all of the Jews that are not saved need to get saved. All of the people that lived in, in Gaza that were not saved need to get saved. Hamas needs to be saved. All of the terrorist organizations in that geographical location needs to be saved. And I pray for all of their salvation. Now what they do is up to them. You follow me? If they don't get right with God, I know that's a no-win situation for them. Because them God's people. Y'all with me? And so like Israel, the church is God's chosen people. Y'all with me? So, so you got to love me just like I got to love you. All right? 1 Peter 2 and 9 declares that we are a chosen generation, a raw priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Amen. So stop trying to fit in because you're going to be different. If your commitment is right, it will automatically make you different. You ain't trying to put nobody down. You ain't trying to be holier than thou. You just going to be different because of your commitment, because of your devotion, right? Is that right? Back to the text. I'm almost there. Lord have mercy. Look at all that stuff. I'm going to just stop. Right? But, uh, but anyhow, Deuteronomy 10 and 12, I'm almost there. I'm going to stop for the day. Y'all get anything out of this? These are just some of the mysteries that are behind uh, the scene, amen, behind the veil, you know, uh, the way that the kingdom works, right? And so, you know, if I want the things of God to really work for me, I got to operate in love toward everybody. Y'all following me? I got to endeavor uh, to see what God sees, you know, in their future. Y'all follow me? Uh, Jesus took Peter one time and rebuked him when Jesus started talking about going to Jerusalem and the things that were going to happen to him in Jerusalem how he was going to be killed by the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees. And Peter rebuked Jesus and said, Lord, be it far from you. He thought he was protecting the Lord. You follow me? And then Jesus turned around and rebuked him. 
call him a, the devil. They depart from me. You know, he, he, he call him a, a devil. Are, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But look, look, Jesus saw then and he saw there, though. He saw that this same man one day was going to stand up on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2. When they asked the question, me and the brother, what shall we do? Jesus saw one day Peter going to stand up and tell them what to do, right? So that's why you got to keep your heart right. Well, you got your knowledge right. You find your intent got to be to please God. And as I go on, I will know. I'll understand more. And God got certain people that he'll put in your life to speak into your life. Y'all, y'all follow? Y'all, y'all got that along with the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, don't make me go there, but don't be coming. To me. I got the Holy Ghost. I don't need you. You lying. You do need me. That's what, you know, the Bible say you do. You follow? With the Holy Ghost. God said in Jeremiah, I'm going to give you pastors according to your own heart. Now, he was talking about folks that were going to have the Holy Ghost still were going to need a pastor to feed them with knowledge and with understanding. So we got, we got to be balanced. Right? Oh, Lord Jesus. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. You there? And I'm about to close this. It says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set. Did I say Deuteronomy? I meant Daniel. I'm sorry. I meant Daniel 10 and 12. Y'all, y'all read it? You know, see, see what's in my spirit at the kitchen with my mouth sometimes. You got it. it that, that happens sometimes. You, know, you, you have something in your spirit, but it's got to catch up with your mouth. Right? Uh, Daniel 10 and 12. It says, then say it. That's where you are. Then said he unto me, Fear not, O Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. So according to the scripture, uh, the very first time that we make up our minds, somebody said make up our minds, (laughs) that we want to know more about the things of God. Amen. And we want to put actions to those desires because faith without works is dead. You follow me? You can want, more, want to know more about God, but then you don't do what it takes to know more about God, and you won't know. You got it? So, but he said the first day that you set yourselves, yourself, right, uh, we set ourselves aside. We chasten or restrain ourselves. Amen. That means certain things we would, could do, we, would, we won't do. You follow me? We restrain ourselves. We pray more. Somebody said pray more. Amen. We spend more time in the word. Somebody said spend more time in the word. Amen. We fast if necessary, right? You do that also. We give God our undivided attention. And we seek him with all of our hearts. That's in Deuteronomy 6 and 5. You, you follow me? Now somebody said that's a lot, but you find time to do anything you want to do. It doesn't matter what it is. If you want to do it, you're going to carve out some time, right? And so... You know, this is along with everything else that we as an individual have to do and have to accomplish. And God understands that. You follow me? But God also understands that you can, at a certain time and in a certain place, carve out time for him. You can do that if you want to. And, in fact, all of those other things will line up if you put God first. Y'all got it? But God said when we decide or make up our mind to do that, Uh, that's the moment that God decides to reveal more of himself to us and more of his plan for us. You follow me? When I make up my mind, God decides I'm going to reveal more to him about me and about him, to him about him. You got it? And God does the same thing with you. When you make up your mind, he's going to reveal more of himself to you. I know a lot about God for a reason. My mind has been made up about a certain things, about certain things. You follow me? And because my mind is made up about certain things, he talks to me more about himself. And then he talks to me about me. Not just where I am, but where I need to be. Are y'all, are y'all hearing me? 
That's the moment that God decides to do that. Jesus said in Revelation 3 and 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup. Amen. That word sup means to interact with him. You follow me? Now, somebody will read that scripture in Revelation. So he's talking about salvation. He's saying at the door of your heart to knock for salv where salvation is concerned. And that is true. He does knock at the door of the heart of the sinner and saying, open up. I'll come in and interact with you. I'll sup with you, right? But after you get saved, he's still knocking. You follow me? He's still saying there are other doors that I want you to walk through. You follow me? He's knocking the day. Yeah. Yeah. Right? He's knocking the day and says, I want you to open up and let, let's, let's me and you go up a little bit higher. Right. There are other places I want you to be at. And then you have to decide today whether or not you want to go. Whether or not you want to go through that door and go up a little bit higher. You want to go through that door, let him reveal more of himself to you. You want to go through that door, let him talk to you more about yourself. You got it? Because he's not trying to hurt you, but he's only trying to help us, right? Is that all right? Amen. And I say when he, you open that door and he come in and sup with you or interact with you, uh, the foundation of that uh, conversation that he'll have with you uh, will be rooted in his word. You follow me? What Jesus want to say to you when you open that door will be rooted in his word. And I say his word first because in Titus 3.16, it, it declares all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I'm closing. So that means that whatever you hear from the law is supposed to be validated by the word and judged by the leadership. Y'all hear me? What you hear is supposed to be validated by the word. It's got to be Bible. And then it'll be judged by the leadership, right? Because everything that people hear is not always inspired by God. Amen. Amen. Right? Everything is not always profitable for doctrine. Amen. Everything can't be used for correction and righteousness. But some things may require, after judgment, reproof and correction. Right? After I hear it, Y'all follow me? It may require reproof or correction. And I was telling somebody today, you know, you really want God to just correct you. Yeah, yeah you, don't, you don't really want to be in a place where you, you require reproof. Y'all got it? See, with correction, he'll just straighten out where I've been in the area at. You don't want him to have to. That's, that's reproof. Uh, Y'all hear what I'm saying? Somebody said, Lord, I want to be corrected. Y'all yeah, yeah, got it. And so we, we're not trying to kill you or, or hurt you, but we want you to be able to stand before God. And he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You follow me? And in all of those things, it takes time to do all of those things. You know, you will only give me so much time. You find me? So I, I endeavor to be ready when the opportunity to present itself. <laughs> Y'all got it? Will you bless? I'm going to stop right there. Um, those are, are just some of the mysteries. Amen. That's not all of that particular message, but we want to stop right there. And we want to say to you that don't know Jesus Christ, amen, as your Lord and Savior. Uh, you can get that taken care of today. You don't have to wait another moment. Amen. You know, God is omnipresent. You know, as he's here, he's there likewise. And so, and maybe you heard God. I'm believing that you did and that you need to get right with God. I want you to pray this prayer uh, with me. And it goes like this. I want you to say, Father God, Father God I, ask you now I ask you now to forgive me, to forgive me of all of my sins. Sins of omission as well as sins of commission. Father God, I receive your forgiveness. I receive your cleansing from all unrighteousness. Father God, I believe 
that Jesus came and he died for all of my sin and he rose on the third day. Now, Lord Jesus, I ask you now to come into my heart and to be my Lord and my Savior. Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart and you are my Lord and my Savior. Amen. And I want to say welcome to the family of God. If you prayed that prayer and believed it, uh, I believe that Jesus walked through the veil of your flesh. He sat down on the throne of your heart, and you became what the Bible calls born again. You became a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away, and you uh, have become new, amen, in every area uh, of your life. Now, I want you to pray, amen, and ask God to lead you. Uh, to a place, to a church, to a Bible-teaching, Bible-believing church where you can continue to grow uh, in the things of God and you can find out what it is God has called you to accomplish as an individual in this life. And you'll stand before God and things will be well. Amen. So we love you and we'll see you back here next time. Amen. Be blessed of the Lord.